listening to an aerial audio production. Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome Harris asked me if I'd ever been in a maze at Hampton Court. He said he went in once to show somebody else the way. He had studied it up in a map, and it was so simple that it seemed foolish, hardly worth the tuppence charged for admission. Harris said he thought that map must have been got up as a practical joke, because it wasn't a bit like the real thing, and only misleading. It was a country cousin Harris took in. He said, "'Well, just go in here, so you can say you've been. But, but honestly, it's very, very simple. I mean, it's absurd even to call it a maze. You keep on taking the first turning to the right. Uh, we'll just walk round for ten minutes and then go and get some lunch.' They met some people soon after they'd got inside, who said they'd been there for three quarters of an hour, and had had just about enough of it. Harris told them that they could follow him if they liked. He was just going in, and then should turn round and come out again. They said it was very kind of him, and fell behind and followed. They picked up various other people who wanted to get it over as they went along, until they'd absorbed all the persons in the maze people who had given up all hope of ever getting either in or out, or of ever seeing their home and friends again, plucked up courage at the sight of Harris and his party, and joined the procession, blessing him. Harris said he should judge there must have been twenty people following him in all, and one woman with a baby, who had been there all the morning, who insisted on taking his arm, for fear of losing him. Harris kept on turning to the right, but it seemed a long way and his cousin said he supposed it was a very big maze. "'Oh, yes, yes, one of the largest in Europe,' said Harris. "'Yes, it must be,' replied the cousin, "'because we've walked a good two miles already.' Harris began to think it rather strange himself, but he held on until at last they passed the half of a penny bun on the ground that Harris's cousin swore he had noticed there seven minutes ago. Harris said, "'Oh, impossible!' But the woman with the baby said, "'Not at all,' as she herself had taken it from the child and thrown it down there just before she met Harris. She also added that she wished she'd never met Harris, and expressed an opinion that he was an impostor. That made Harris mad, and he produced his map and explained his theory. "'Well, the map may be all right enough,' said one of the party, "'if you know whereabouts in it we are now.' Harris didn't know, and suggested that the best thing to do would be to go back to the entrance and begin again. For the beginning again part of it there was not much enthusiasm, but with regard to the advisability of going back to the entrance there was complete unanimity, and so they turned and trailed after Harris again in the opposite direction. About ten minutes more passed, and then they found themselves in the centre. Harris thought at first of pretending that that was where he'd been aiming at all along. But the crowd looked dangerous, and he decided to treat it as an accident. Anyhow, they had got something to start from then. They did know where they were, and the map was once more consulted, and the thing seemed simpler than ever, and off they started for the third time. Three minutes later, they were back in the centre again. After that, they simply couldn't get anywhere else. Whatever way they turned brought them back to the middle. It became so regular at length that some of the people stopped there and waited for the others to take a walk around and come back to them. Harris drew out his map again, after a while, but the sight of it only infuriated the mob, and they told him to go and curl his hair with it. Harris said that he couldn't help feeling that to a certain extent he had become unpopular. They all got crazy at last, and sang out for the keeper, and the man came and climbed up the ladder outside, and shouted directions to them. But all their heads were, by this time, in such a confused whirl that they were incapable of grasping anything, so the man told them to stop where they were, and he'd come and get them. They huddled together and waited, and he climbed down and came in. He was a young keeper, as luck would have it, and new to the business, and when he got in, he couldn't find them and he wandered about trying to get to them, and then he got lost. They caught sight of him every now and then, rushing about the other side of the hedge, and he would see them and rush to get at them, and they would wait there for about five minutes, and then he would reappear again in exactly the same spot, and ask them 
where they had been. They had to wait till one of the old keepers came back from his dinner before they got out. Harry said he thought it was a very fine maze, so far as he was a judge, and we agreed that we would try to get George to go into it on our way back.